Hey, this is Charles with Historical Gaming, and today we're going to take a look at Commands and Colors Tricorn by Compass Games, designed by Rich, Richard Borg, one of my favorite game designers. These rules are available for free. If you Google Compass Games, Commands and Colors Tricorn, a PDF should pop right up, and it's a great read. It's, it's very similar to other games in the series, and there's a lot of nice nuances uh, that give it a really good American Revolutionary War feeling. Um, Richard Borg does such a good job of taking something simple and making it fit the game. So, uh, I, you know, I, I could go through the other games in the series, but the thing that I really like the most about this one is the morale. So, um, when you make a unit retreat, you have to pass a morale check for that unit to be able to stay into the game. So, all a morale check is is trying to roll a single flag. So, any unit that's taking a morale check gets one die per block within its unit. It gets one more for being full strength, and it gets one more if there's a leader present. And if you roll a flag, he passes that check. I did not roll a flag, and that unit would be eliminated from the game because it keeps routing and running away. This kind of represents like the the uh, strength or the, the probability of morale breaking with the American army. Uh, the British are stronger, so uh, there's some nice things notes in here as far as which units can uh, do better on rally checks different things like that so i think it's going to have a nice feel to the game instead of being just all about bloody carnage like the command of color napoleonics you're up front and you're facing somebody and there's just total carnage you know, you're you're trying to eliminate the other guy this guy if you make somebody retreat he basically can just run away from the battle so that's going to be a cool aspect to the game very similar to other games in the series, you've got the uh, regular command cards, which kind of order units, and then you've got battle cards, and you've got a British deck, and uh, combat cards, and then you've got an American deck. And so, uh, just like other games in the series, you use your command cards to order your units. Uh, you'll use whatever that card says you can order. You can order two units in this section, so you'll pick the two units you want to order. You'll move those two units how you want to, according to the, the player aid, and then you'll fire, and uh, that's pretty much it. There's also combat cards that you can use. These do not come back automatically. So a command card you get back at the end of the turn, the combat cards you will not, unless the card says draw one combat card after at the end of your turn. That's the only way you can replenish these. So if you want to save these towards the end of the game when you're getting close to it, endpoint and uh, you want to just go in for the hammer kill that's awesome but once you spent them you spent them so the way the game uh, plays and uh, the first thing that's going to happen is a cannonade so that means the cannons get to free fire uh, and they shoot and they um, resolve that combat and then they have the chance to retreat if they want to so if I wanted to fire my cannons here, and the only eligible unit I really see is here. So it's uh, two dice here, two dice here, one and one. If I shoot one here, he's in terrain, so that's basically null, no shot. So let's say I roll one die here, and I rolled a flag. So he's supported, which means he's got units on each side of him that support him for that attack. This leader can also support him too, but uh, let's say that he wasn't supported and he had to retreat. And now he does a combat check or a morale check uh, for four dice, plus one for being full strength, one for the leader. He rolled a flag, or two flags actually, so he's okay and he can still stay in the game. So the cannonade is over, and if I want to, I can draw these guys back to here with my leader, and that leader will give me a little bit of a benefit uh, for combat and things like that. So then it would be the American player's turn, and he could play Assault Right. Okay, so that means everybody on the right-hand side is going to be able to uh, be ordered. And that's going to take a bit to do, so I'll come back in just a second after I move everybody. Okay, movement's not going to be a problem here, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. So everybody can pretty much just move one. I'm going to move all these guys up one. This leader is going to move up to here, and this militia will move up to here, and this militia 
I'll move up to here. And I laid the blocks flat just so it's easier for you guys to see. If you're playing against somebody, you probably stand them up. But I just wanted to show that to you. So now that everybody's been moved, we're going to look at the combat phase. Okay, so let's do uh, this combat here first. So if you've got your rules in front of you, I am on page 12. So uh, this is considered melee. So the first step that happens is we announce melee. If the defending unit is either cavalry or light infantry, he can retire and reform for that attack, but he is not. He is a grenadier, which is going to be bad news for us probably. Determine the strength of the melee combat and resolve combat. All right. So, melee. The base number of the melee dice is increased or reduced as follows. So let's first look at our chart. There is uh, four guys there for regular infantry, and their base is two. All right, so they're getting two dice to start out with. Uh, they have a leader with them, and they have a full strength unit. So a full strength unit combats with one additional die. A leader attached to an infantry, cavalry, artillery unit rolls an additional melee die. Uh, I can add any command cards or uh, combat cards. So let's do, play this alongside of your command card this turn. All ordered regular infantry battle with one additional die. So why not? So we'll just play that one. And we'll get one more die there. Uh, add any combat melee additions. Add any combat card melee additions. Reduce the number of dice rolled in melee combat by any terrain modifier. So there's no terrain there. All right, so he's going up against Grenadiers. All right, so let's roll more dice and see what we get. All right, so we have one flag, which probably can be ignored. Sword is a kill, and two infantry. So one, two, three are gone. And he's down to one unit there. All right. So uh, just to kind of give you an example of the game some more, uh, let's take a look at if he was not um, able to ignore that flag. So Grenadiers can ignore one flag, but uh, in this case, we're going to say that he's just a regular unit. And let's say he backs up here. Okay. So now he's got to pass a morale test. So he's going to roll one die. We'll be in a... Uh, for his unit block count. So you always get at least one die for uh, a rally check. So uh, let's go through the list here. You get plus one for a full strength unit. He is not a full strength unit. Plus one for an attached leader. He does not have a leader. Plus two for a guard infantry. He is not a guard infantry. Plus one for a grenadier infantry, so he gets one additional die. And minus one for provincial inf infantry. And militia is minus one as well. Um, and again, you never go lower than a one. We did not get a flag. That's a victory point for the Americans. And so they get an award there. Okay. So that was the first attack. Uh, now the regulars will attack. Okay, so this is a ranged attack. So since we're not directly next to the unit. So a full strength unit rolls with one additional die. So he is a uh, militia. Uh, looking at the chart. Militia rolls with one die at that dis distance. Okay. He's a full strength unit, he gets one additional die. He does not have a leader attached. I do not have any uh, command cards. So play this command card alongside your command card this turn. All ordered regular infantry, so that is not a regular infantry. And he moved this turn, so it's minus one die. So we're rolling against this regular unit here, and it's flat. He's supported, and we'll go ahead and play regular now. Uh, and he would ignore that, and so there's no effect. Uh, out of range here, I believe. Militia. 
unless it is 211. So actually 211, we have a shot there. We'll go ahead and do one for ranged attack, plus one for being a full strength unit, minus one for moving, and minus one for militia. So infantry. And let's see what else. I don't think anybody else is within range. So talking about line of sight real quickly here, this unit can see down the spine, and he cannot see the center of this hex, so he's not able to shoot there. So that is the American player's turn, and then they would draw a combat card back. Let's replace that card. And we'll go to this discard, and now it's the British player's turn. Uh, the British player can play two in each section. So in the left and right sections, issue one order to two units or leaders. So uh, we will order these two. Actually, uh, this one and this one. All right. And then on this side, We'll order the artillery and the regular. All right, so we'll do this first because he's just going to move. And this guy's going to move up. So since they have nothing to shoot, since they're in the trees, we're just going to wait right there. And so now we're going to do our artillery. So we looked at the light field artillery, and it is 2-2-1-1-1. So 2-2-1-1-1. Uh, we'll shoot here against the regulars. We have a two base, plus one for being full strength. No leader present. We didn't move, so we're good there. So, all right, so that is a cross swords, which is a miss, cavalry, which is a miss, and a retreat, which he can ignore because he's supported on each side. That was no effect. Regular infantry here will shoot against the guys in the woods. So regulars are two, two, one. Since he's in the woods, that takes us down to one. But first, we're going to do the uh, the strength of the unit is two, and then we, uh, full strength unit adds one, and then minus one for the terrain. This is two dice, a flag, and an artillery. He's supported, so that's ignored. Ignored. And that's the end of the turn for the British player. We draw a replacement card. And that's pretty much how the game works back and forth. So I hope you enjoy this brief introduction to this. Uh, once the units get dwindled down, I think that morale is going to be a lot of fun as far as uh, watching the units just disappear off the board. Uh, the, the leaders have some special rules in there, which uh, are very flavorful to the era. And uh, leaders escape. and all kinds of different things. There's leader checks in the game. There's also battle back when you get into melee. Can't remember if I did that or not. Well, actually, he retreated, so uh, he did not get to uh, do the melee. But um, I hope you enjoy the quick overview of the game. It's, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun, and I can't wait to get it to the table. Take care.